Warning. Censorship. Warning. Censorship. You should be the one beheaded because you're damn stupid not to understand it. We're going through a pandemic. And this is bloody ridiculous that people like you are the ones that are causing the problem. Get a life. Stay home. Wear a mask. Be social distance. Stop being a jack. So there you have it. This woman thinks that you should be beheaded. You've reached out to police, I understand, Alicia, as well you should. What's been the reaction? Um, the police tell me that because it's cyber and because these most of these people's threats to burn down my building and do all that, it's cyber. Even though I found their identities, the police say because it's cyber, there's nothing concrete they can go after. But the minute I shared that meme, there's something concrete enough that the next time they reached out to me was to ask me about the meme that I shared, but they aren't reaching out to me about any of the threats on my person or my child or my house. It's really interesting. Listen, I'm just doing a story on chrome uh, barbering, and I came across uh, some of your pieces, and there was one in which the story is kind of implicating Alicia Herder uh, in terms of giving a death threat to Niagara's acting medical officer of health. And Sorry to not do that, Mr. Then I don't really have any comment for you. Oh, okay. It's, it, it's your story, though, isn't it? I mean, I'll, I'll read it to you. It says, Opponents of Niagara's... You have to read story, Menzies. The story does not implicate Ms. Herter in anything other than the post that she made. You're well aware uh, of that. Well, so did she make a post? Sir, didn't she make a post in, uh, advocating for violence or death? Huh. Hung up. He's very busy. Huh. David Menzies for Rebel News. Back here again at Chrome Artistic Barbering uh, in St. Catharines, Ontario. And I'm with uh, the operator of this uh, wonderful salon, Alicia Herder. And you may recall how the story originally began last month, folks. Alicia found a uh, loophole, if you want to call it that, to allow her to remain in business. She reimagined Chrome Artistic Barbering as a film production company. And as you know, right across Canada, film production companies, they're working all through this pandemic. And uh, Alicia's making a documentary, and she originally had the blessing by a bylaw officer here at the City of St. Catharines. Hello, Steve Speck with the City Hall, and everybody else considered uh, with the filming industry part of it is good. Have a nice day. Well... Publicity led to bylaw from both the city and the region clamping down. Alicia closed down for a little while. A another salon, uh, Evolution Salon and Spa, were doing the same uh, business model. They'd closed down, and then they decided enough is enough. We're going to go back into the film production business. But then things really took a sinister twist. And Alicia, we go back just a few days ago, and somehow... You are being accused of advocating for the death of the medical health officer in Niagara, uh, Mustafa Herji. Uh, what, what's happened here? Uh, I went online. I participated in other email campaigns um, to make moves in St. Catharines, and there was another one that was advertised. It was hashtag fire Herji. Um, the instructions were to write an email to Dr. Herji, let him know how disappointed we were in the 20,000 jo jobs lost in St. Catharines and are continuing to be in the gray phase. And after that, I decided to make a meme that said, hashtag fire Herji, like everybody else had done. And I posted it and it went from there. And at no point in this meme, and I think I've seen it, that's uh, Herji's picture with uh, two little uh, devils on his shoulders. Mm -hmm. At any point did you ever call for violence or death to Dr. Herji? No, not at all. I simply repeated, hashtag fire Herji. We have a right. He's a public constituent. We weren't happy with what he was doing, hence the campaign. So I simply recreated a little bit of a better meme, a more effective meme than just a hashtag. 
And of course, the fallout has just been stunning, folks. Um, both Premier Doug Ford and Prime Minister Justin Trudeau have weighed in uh, on this, saying that this is completely unacceptable. And by the way, it is unacceptable. You don't call for the death of a public official or anybody. I mean, that's my line when it comes to, uh, my line in the sand, that is, when it comes to free speech. You don't advocate harm or death to a person or an identifiable group. But the thing is, it was not Alicia Herder calling for this. It was other people online, and yet they're claiming that you incited them somehow by a silly little meme? Yes, because there was an underline under Dr. Herji's name. It's a, actually, it's a graphics app that I used, and when you search underline, it was the underline that came up. Um, it was red, and it's been told to me that it looks like it's a blood smear. That wasn't the intention. It was to match the, that wasn't my intention at all. You can blatantly see by the meme. Other people shared it, but I'm the one, apparently, that shared it in a different way to incite violence and a beheading. That wasn't the case at all. And, of course, folks, the media party has piled on. Uh, you showed me a story that was written by Grant LaFleche of the St. Catherine Standard. Can you read the lead, uh, Alicia, in terms of what he said? And, folks, you can see how this could be very badly misconstrued in terms of blaming Alicia for these ongoing uh, death threats that have popped up uh, for this doctor. Opponents of Niagara's upcoming COVID-19 gray area lockdown, including a salon owner who has opened in defiance of pandemic regulations, have taken to social media calling for the firing, arrest and assault and even beheading of Niagara's acting medical officer of health. And of course, you are the salon owner. Um, so uh, to me, Alicia, uh, and we spoke off camera about this, you're so upset about this that you're reaching out to legal counsel right now in terms of a defamation claim against the St. Catherine Standard. Well, right now I've got to do something. I mean, this, this article has changed everything. Sorry, I'm, it, I have to do something. So yeah, I'm looking into something because my life has changed in a crazy way because he incited violence against me. It wasn't, it wasn't me inciting violence against anybody. He's done that at me now, so I've got to make a move for sure. And, and if you need a moment, I understand, Alicia. And, and folks, uh, Alicia's telling the truth because here's the other part of the story that isn't getting reported and a part of the story that not even the police, if you can imagine, are responding to. Alicia has been getting hate messages and death threats herself. Let's um, play this message where uh, this man... Uh, uses all kinds of vulgarity and implied threats against Alicia and her children. Just check this out. Yeah, looking for the racist white crack. The only I feel sorry for is your children. Yeah, your Thanks. children are. Yeah, you forget. Look in your background. Look, look where your children are. Barely above the poverty line. So, so you want what to be a racist? I've had enough. You're, on, you're on tape. I've got your original number. Thank you for the harassment. I've been taping this phone call. I taped your other two. The police are on their way here already for other stuff. I can't wait to join it in. Thank you for using your <laughs> other stuff for the eh? first time. Is there anything else you'd like to say on record at this point? On record? Yeah, uh -huh. go for it. I'm giving you the opportunity. You're being recorded. So please continue saying what you need to say. You're quiet. You're the one that I'm has giving to you say the something? freedom of speech to so go for it. Like I said, you're, I've got you're, this recording. You're the one go that has it. to say something, right? You're the one that cuts beards off of people and uh, turns them into hipsters, right? And then thinks that she's cool. Okay, now you're going to simmer down a little bit now that you know you're recorded, huh? What happened to the comments in the beginning? What comments? All you had to do is say, I don't provide that business. I don't need to do anything to and anyone. And we wouldn't have gone down this road, but you identified oh, no, yourself no, 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 no. You don't get to news. play that. I didn't, I didn't ask you to call me names. I didn't ask you to call and threaten me. I didn't ask you to do any of this. You know, uh, that is despicable. You are a single mother. This, I, we don't even know who this man is, this coward who uh, gives you that threatening call. Um, it's despicable, Alicia. But to even uh, torque up the rhetoric, just check out what this woman had to say to Alicia. You should be the one beheaded because you're damn stupid not to understand it. We're going through a pandemic. And this is bloody ridiculous that people like you are the ones that are causing the problem. Get alive. Stay home. Wear a mask. 
be social distance. Stop being a jack. So there you have it. This woman thinks that you should be beheaded. You've reached out to police, I understand, Alicia, as well you should. What's been the reaction? Um, the police tell me that because it's cyber and because these most of these people's threats to burn down my building and do all that, it's cyber. Even though I found their identities, the police say because it's cyber, there's nothing concrete they can go after. But the minute I shared that meme, there's something concrete enough that the next time they reached out to me was to ask me about the meme that I shared, but they aren't reaching out to me about any of the threats on my person or my child or my house. It's really interesting. And uh, to add to the, to add fuel to this outrageous fire, you've even been described as racist. You uh, made mention of uh, business owners' lives matter, you know, to use the BLM in initials. And uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But And also, we add to the fact that um, uh, your ex-husband is indeed a black man and your children, I guess, are biracial. So... Oh. It, it, that kind of blows a bit of a hole in this whole racist accusation too, doesn't it? Uh, it's really hurtful. It's really hurtful because that was taken from me suggesting we stand across Lake Street with business owners' Lives Matter shirts on with linked arms to demand change and like the, with the fire herji. I didn't say anything about Black Lives Matter. The fact that my son's not going to have friends and he's going to hear about his mother being a racist later on because of this article linking me back to this, it's... It's, I can't believe what's even happening. It is outrageous. You, you are not, there is no evidence that I've come across, folks, that links any call to violence, any call to death to Alicia. So these are all complete lies and fabrications. The police say, well, we can't do anything about these anonymous phone calls and these online threats. Yet, Alicia, the police have been showing up in your parking lot, have been showing up outside your personal residence, I don't know. They're they're trying to intimidate you, and for what? For creating a a silly little meme of a health official with devils on his shoulders? They're all into investigating you about that. As I don't know what. Can you explain this to me? No, I'm super confused. I've never felt like this in my life. I think I'm doing the right thing. I mean, I did the right thing when I opened. How is this happening? How is this okay to anybody? What's happening? I'm trying to just survive in my business. I'm getting death threats. It doesn't weigh out at all. And the police, I'm very confused the way the police are handling it because I don't understand how mine's not a big deal, but a meme is a big deal. It's, it doesn't make sense at all. It doesn't make sense, aside from the fact that maybe the police are pro-shutdown and lockdown. The media certainly are, folks. Um, and you being, of course, ticketed several times. We already have you on as a Fight the Fines candidate, as well as uh, Dennis and Lisa at Evolution Salon and Spa. Um, I know you're getting very emotional about this. Uh, it, it, it breaks my heart, Alicia. Uh, no one deserves this kind of treatment. Um, surely, I mean, do you have any kind of plan B out there? I see that the studio is, is back in operation. Um, but are the haters out there, how have they affected your business? Um, business, we, we have an we have a lot of supporters out there too that are reaching out right now and they're booking in and they're they're trying to be supportive the haters the momentum has changed here i felt what i was doing before was an honest it was part of an it was honest and it was towards a movement and now i feel like i've got brought down as a person and it's like nothing i can do would be honest at this point because of this article so what can i tell you folks i mean this is a courageous woman who is just trying to, well, I guess she, in the eyes of the state and the police and the media party and the haters out there, uh, she is committing the egregious crime of simply trying to make a living. I mean, I never thought I would see this happen in Canada, but she is the one being falsely accused of uh, putting death threats out there when she is the victim of receiving death threats and hate and that is completely unacceptable. You know, Alicia, we're going to continue to follow this story. Um, you know, I know if you do get a defamation case going, uh, you're probably going to have to start a GoFundMe uh, page because, you know, unlike the St. Catherine Standard, you don't, you're not part of a big corporation with deep pockets. So um, let me know how those meetings with that lawyer go, uh, happen because, in my humble opinion, I really do think you've been defamed and slandered. Thank you very much again. Thank you, Rebel News. Again. Okay.
All right, and folks, like I said, we'll continue to carry out uh, coverage of what's happening in St. Catharines. This is an absolutely, absolutely shameful state of affairs, and we're not going to let Alicia weather this alone. By the way, folks, we did reach out to Grant LaFleche of the St. Catharines Standard. Um, didn't go so well. I guess he's just really too busy to explain things here. Check out our brief conversation. Hello, speaking. Yeah, hi there, Grant. Uh, it's uh, David Menzies calling from Rebel News. How you doing there? I do for you, Mr. Menzies. Pardon me, sorry? I do for you, Mr. Menzies. I'm very busy. Oh, okay, I'm so sorry. Um, listen, I'm just doing a story on chrome uh, barbering, and I came across uh, some of your pieces and there was one in which the story is kind of implicating Alicia Herder uh, in terms of giving a death threat to Niagara's acting medical officer of health. Yeah, and, sorry to not do that, Mr. Then I don't really have any comment for you. Oh, okay. It's, it, it's your story, though, isn't it? I mean, I'll, I'll read it to you. It says, opponents of Niagara's... Yeah, Niagara's I'll read the story, Mr. Menzies. The story does not implicate Ms. Herder in anything other than the post that she made. You're well aware of that. Well, that. did she make a post? Uh, uh, sir, didn't she make a post in, uh, advocating for violence or death? Huh. Hung up. He's very busy. Huh. Yeah, so that is a member of the media party in all its glory. You see, Grant LaFleche doesn't mind going around smearing uh, a single mother trying to make a living. But when it comes to um, people like me that want to interview people like him, um, he's not really such a bully anymore, is he? He he kind of just waves the flag of surrender and hangs up the receiver. <laughs> How pathetic is that? Are you an operator of a small business and you're ready to take a stand against big government telling you that your doors have to remain shut as the public sector carries on well reach out to us at iwillopen.com that's iwillopen.com tell us your story and we'll tell the world your story as well